And welcome back to You Rejoin at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is the 31st of a 120 video series uh, on things that I think that you should know. Uh, today we're going to be talking about yet another logical fallacy. Surprise, surprise. Uh, this one is going to be the argument from ignorance. Uh, so how the argument from ignorance is going to work, uh, or the appeal to ignorance, or argument or argumentum ad ignorantium, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, is that you're going to assume that a claim is true uh, because it has not been proven false. Or vice versa, that you're going to assume that a claim is false because it has not been proven true. Or either of those two cases and substitute in unknown for true or false or unknowable for true or false. All four of those, for the most part, can safely be grouped together uh, in this kind of category of this argument from ignorance. The, the of course, idea being that there's you're, you're, you're arguing from ignorance that the world is a certain way, that the way the, the universe is somehow depends on your knowing about the state of the universe. Now, in some cases, that may be okay. Uh, you know, if I look at the monitor and I see a monitor, then you know, I know that that's true because I know that there's a mon monitor there, or at least that I know that I'm seeing that there's a monitor because I see a monitor in front of me. Uh, and, you know, when we're talking about the things we can directly sense, you know, touch, smell, uh, taste, see, that sort of thing, then, you know, if, if you don't see it, then you, you can't say that you, you see it uh, when you don't, if that makes any sense. But the, the, the whole uh, kind of thing that is, is being surrounded here is that uh, that there's this reason to believe that there's something that's true when you have no conclusive proof, even if you have some evidence for it, and that there's some kind of uh, a need for there to be this absolute level of certainty in the, the, the mat or subject matter that you're talking about. So for example, here, here's an example to hopefully make this a little bit more clear. You know, if, if I'm uh, the, some uh, uh, attorney or a lawyer trying to defend my client, uh, Colonel Mustard, I could say to the other, uh, you know, lawyer, something like, okay, you know, I, I know, or, or, you know, the, the judge about the other lawyer, say, uh, uh, something of the story, you know, Your Honor, I know that the other attorney involved here has presented evidence that his witness saw my client, Colonel Mustard, leaving the book room with the candlestick in his hand, and the candlestick was covered in blood, and uh, he was there when he you know, didn't have an appointment, and he had a really mean look on his eye, but that doesn't mean that he murdered this poor other guy. It just, I mean, you have not proved that he murdered. He could have, after all, uh, you know, been there for a completely coincidental reason. Uh, I will, you know, not describe what that reason is, but it could be that there's this reason that you don't know why he might be carrying this, you know, candlestick covered in blood. Um, and so when you don't provide the details there, and all you do is just sort of assume that there isn't this deductive proof involved, you are committing the argument from ignorance. And so, you know, yes indeed, it's, it's possible that, you know, he could have accidentally found a candlestick laying on the ground, and he's in a bad mood because he, his wife just left him, and, you know, he was in the room because, you know, he was looking for his wife, uh, or, or, or looking, you know, to... to, to looking for his divorce lawyer who he expected to be in the room and he wouldn't normally be there but today he's getting divorced and on and on. You can always create a, a reason, a, 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 a possible doubt, but these aren't reasonable doubts. These are things that you would have to actually claim in order to, to have them be at all possibly relevant. Um, and that, yeah, it's, it's true that it's not absolutely proved that he did it, but it sure makes it look like he did it. And in a court of law, as in many other situations, there's a burden of proof. There's a ev level of ed evidence that's acceptable to make a decision or a conclusion. Uh, and yes, depending what kind of court case you're involved in, you know, criminal, maybe, uh, I can't remember what it is, maybe 50% plus one, it could be, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, it could be, uh, you know, d again, it depends on the, the, the particular context, the particular legal case involved, the particular legal guidelines involved. And perhaps you're not even in a court case. Perhaps you're in just a private conversation with friends or, or, or in some kind of a university setting or something. Perhaps you're in a scientific setting. Either way, there's going to be some level of evidence or some level of proof that's uh, compatible with your situation. 
and that allows you to make a decision one way or the other of what you find at least acceptable to believe. And there's going to be ways that you can get into situations where it's it's going to be very tempting to say, well, I mean, you can't prove that we haven't, you know, established this or that we have established this, even though you know you've clearly met that level of or that burden of proof. Uh, but you know, pushing on that is going to be, again, this argument for ignorance. So, again, uh, like previous videos, we can kind of write this out in a more formal sense. You can have, you know, statement P or that P is not proved, and I put yet. So you, you know, we haven't established something, and then therefore, P is false. That's not something you can conclude. First of all, this doesn't even look right because you you should have two things in or two premises in order to make a conclusion. Really, we only have the one, so that that's kind of broken already. But again, we're 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 kind of concluding something without having any any evidence to actually do so. Uh, th this should sound kind of familiar, and we'll get into the, the reasons it should sound familiar in a bit. But it should really ring some bells. The other way, of course, is the other way around. You know, statement not P, which is again what that little hook means, uh, is not proved yet. Therefore, P is true. You know, either way, it's, it's, it, you're, you're concluding something based on not knowing something. It's not even that you're you're you're, conclude, you're concluding something based on uh, nothing. You're 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 depending your interpretation or your knowledge of the world on your own knowledge rather than the state of the world itself. That is incorrect and wrong. You should depend what you believe on the state of the world. That is how you know belief should be organized. You're 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 going to run into a lot of trouble if you do not organize your belief in this fashion. And so, as I mentioned, this should sound familiar from previous videos. We've talked about uh, the e absence of evidence and how the absence of e evidence is uh, not necessarily evidence of absence, although there's a caveat with that. Uh, you know, that, that can be something like a shorthand for this uh, logical fallacy, but again, it's not completely the same thing because there, there's a, it, it's a little bit more general than that. Uh, it's, it's similar to the uh, affirmative conclusion from negative premises. Because if you notice, this is a negative premise. We're, we're, we're talking about something that is not true, and we're concluding something from it. Uh, so, so it's a, at least a related uh, thing to that. You could reframe the, the, the fallacy in, in terms of that. Uh, and from the previous one, uh, you could view this as an affirmative conclusion from negative premises. Uh, or, um, or, sorry, I got that back. Or negative conclusion from affirmative pre premises. Uh, that you, you can view it in that way, but it's, it's a little bit more specific. Um, and so it's, it's worth kind of noting on its own. Uh, you can interpret this as, again, a, a similar or very similar to the argument from incredulity, uh, as we've mentioned in previous videos. Because if you don't believe that something is possible, therefore it's not possible. Again, that, that's, not, that, that's committing that previous logical fallacy. Uh, it can also be related to uh, the, uh, what's the other one? argument from silence. Uh, again, you're, you're, you're concluding something based on not having the evidence. It's a very similar thing. Almost the same thing, but not quite. And it's also similar to a, a new logical fallacy that I've learned here at home base, which I, I guess we're calling the argument from stupid, uh, which is basically the uh, committing this particular logical fallacy, but only doing so with a statement that is so wrong and so you know, logically incorrect, uh, that I it's difficult to untangle the argument because the statement buried within it is so uh, just wrong and possibly stupid. Um, so that that's kind of, kind of to give an example. You know, we're we're we're, we're we've got all these logical fallacies that are very similar in this this one specific sense, and that there's this you're 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 starting from a standpoint where you're you're ignorant and you're believing something because you're ignorant. Again, that's that's wrong. You should really try not to do that. What does this look like in practice? 
it looks like you're raising doubt. You're, you're, you're employing fun, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, and don't get me wrong, it's not always a bad idea to be skeptical or to demand more evidence. Uh, you know, to, be, to demand more evidence is a good thing. You should question everything in general. You should question authority in general. But this is a little more specific than merely just questioning everything in a general sense or questioning authority in a general sense. You're, you're not really questioning evidence so much as demanding a higher standard of proof. You're demanding a higher standard of evidence. And so you're not necessarily questioning the evidence involved. You're, you're saying, okay, well, you, I see you have this evidence. I need more. And it, you know, yes, it's, it's very appropriate in some cases to say, yes, I need more evidence. Uh, but you, you should be clear when you do so and not, you know, conclude things from your, your doing so. Uh, if, if you have an issue with the burden of proof or the level of burden of proof in a situation. So, for example, if you're in a court case and, you know, you think, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, is not a good enough uh, level of, or burden of proof, uh, to, you know, not a good enough level to guarantee a public uh, out or a um, public interest outcome. You know, you should say that. You shouldn't say, you know, because, you know, it could be that you're, you know, you're wrong, that uh, we, we should automatically let, you know, let my client off or something like that. You should say, you know, if we get this wrong, here are the consequences for getting it wrong. We should, you know, explicitly raise the uh, the burden of uh, evidence here. That would be acceptable. Concluding without saying that that you should be let off because the evidence isn't perfect. Again, committing this fallacy. If you're trying to treat inductive reasoning like deductive reasoning, you can get into this problem. If you assume that you can prove something perfectly when you're 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 using you know uh, uh, empirical data to do so. Well, you're, you're never going to be able to do it. You're always going to have some doubt, some possibility that your apparatus is wrong, that you're, 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 everything that you, you've tested has been due to chance and against, you know, the, that odds, your, your statement is, uh, or, or what you're looking for is, is you know, in invalidated. It's, you're, you're, you're always going to have this, this level of doubt that you have to be able to live with if you're dealing with science, if you're dealing with induction, if you're dealing with uh, things that are not purely deductive uh, arguments. In the case of deductive arguments, you can get away with certain things. Uh, but again, if you confuse the two or try to make the case that uh, you should be treating it purely as a deductive thing when it's not, again, you're committing this fallacy. Uh, it often looks like wishful thinking. You know, if we want to believe something is true and we have no evidence that it's false, we may be tempted to believe that it's true. There are comforting things that we could believe that we have no evidence against. And a lot of people do, in fact, believe such things to be true. Uh, they can believe, for example, uh, that uh, someone they look up to uh, is, I, I guess, innocent of a crime. There's all been a good couple of cases in the past couple of uh, decade or two where there's been serious abuse uh, in sports facilities. Uh, and the fans of the sports teams rally in support of the abu abusers because they don't believe that it's possible that, you know, the people they admire could be, you know, uh, guilty of such a thing. And they don't have access to the evidence in some cases. And so they assume that because they don't see the evidence uh, that the people are abusers directly, that they couldn't possibly do it. Um, there are, as kind of mentioned, valid uses of ignorance uh, involved in you know, setting the, the, the burden of proof in a particular situation where it's possible to explicitly talk about, uh, you know, the uh, amount of doubt involved, the amount of uncertainty involved. And it may be possible to con conclude from those situations something, but it's usually not the opposite of what the, the claim is. Um, as kind of an example from this, the, the, the most difficult to get example is brought up in a previous video is the precautionary principle. Uh, there's going to be a, you know, necessary discussion when using the precautionary principle about what exactly the costs are of being ignorant of some, you know, thing, some effect of some technology, or some effect of some thing, or the use of something, or some tool. Uh, and it may be, you know, worth, you know, really looking into those consequences. But again, the the use of ignorance itself uh, cannot be the only driving factor for making decisions. 
Uh, and so you have to be really careful when, when doing so that you don't uh, use so or use that uh, justification improperly. Uh, here are some examples again to look at the, the broader sense in which ignorance has been used, and it's used often, especially in uh, communities that do not believe uh, very highly of science. Uh, so he, he, one example being, quote, the U.S. government has denied that there are UFOs present at Area 51. Therefore, there are definitely aliens in Area 51. Okay, well, you know, you could take another step and say, because, you know, things that they, uh, the U.S. government says often turn out, turn out to be lies, but notice that that wasn't part of it. It's just purely a, here's something that, you know, they said, therefore, you know, the opposite is true. Well, there may or may not be aliens at Area 51, but, you know, the, the government not denying it doesn't really give us a any evidence either way. It's just saying that, you know, one, one thing is true, uh, which is that they say, you know, that there's no aliens there. You can't conclude from that that there are aliens there. That's concluding from a negative. You're, you're concluding from an absence of knowledge. Uh, here's another one, quote, I don't know how homeopathy works, but it does, unquote. Okay, again, so just because you don't know how something works doesn't necessarily mean that it works. Um, and that, you know, or rather just because you don't know, you know, the, the uh, or you, you can't really conclude that because there's, there's no, uh, again, it's kind of hard to, to, to turn these around and to, to state them in this, in this way, but there's, you know, the, 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 the argument that it does being based on, you know, the absence of evidence that it's not, you know, working. Again, there, there may be reasons why homeopathy doesn't work. Uh, in fact, there are reasons that homeopathy doesn't work, but it, that particular argument is said by someone who isn't aware of those reasons. So you can't conclude again that it does, in fact, work. Here's another one, quote, I don't see how evolution could work, therefore it doesn't work. Again, your understanding of evolution has zero bearing whatsoever on whether evolution, in fact, works. Um, quote, come on, hook up with me tonight, unquote. Quote, why should I, quote, unquote. Or, quote, why shouldn't you? You know, it's, you know, turning around the, what should we do? I don't know, do this. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Well, why shouldn't you do it? it it's, a, it's a flipping of the, it's an inversion of the burden of proof. Notice that, that the burden of proof was changed there, but they didn't explicitly say that they were changing it. Um, here's another one, quote, no one has disproved that I have these magical golden plates, therefore I have these magical golden plates. Again, you know, it's going back to the, the similar, you know, is there a dragon sitting right beside me? Again, you can't make that kind of argument, it just doesn't work. And, you know, finally, you know, we can't exactly explain how the brain produces consciousness, therefore, you know, it's because you have a soul. Again, it's the, the we have a pretty good idea of how neuro, or neurons work. It's not a perfect, you know, description. There's a lot of science left to be done on, you know, the, the entirety of how the human connectome works or the, the entirety of how the human brain works, but, you know, we're getting pretty good. But nevertheless, there are gaps in our knowledge, significant gaps, but that does not excuse believing something, you know, from no evidence rather than from evidence. So, um, hopefully th this has been, uh, you know, exhaustive enough for uh, a particular logical fallacy, which, it, as mentioned, are, is very similar to and, and kind of intertwined with so many of the previous ones. But just kind of in summary, you know, when you make arguments, really look to see, are you just believing something because you're ignorant of something else? If you are, really reconsider making that argument, or, or, or really reconsider whether or not what you're believing is actually the case. Uh, I implore you. So, if you have any questions, or would like to make unsupported statements uh, by any evidence whatsoever, uh, feel free to leave them in any comment thread where this video is posted. Um, as usual, I'm open uh, for, for suggestions, and uh, uh, there should be a Bitcoin address if you're interested in supporting the series. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you then.